I mean, I'd heard of Bitcoin before, obviously, but it was not something I'd really looked at that much. But that, at that time, I read the Bitcoin white paper the first time. And my first reaction to reading it was this is, as a technology, very interesting. And really, financial transactions seems not to do it justice as a technology. I, I was mainly at that point interested in its censorship resistance, so how I could use it as a technology to build, for instance, a discussion platform which was not controlled by any one entity. Uh, so that's, at that point I sort of mostly left it and went on with my studies until my final year I saw as one of the project proposals that Agalos was doing something with smart contracts in Ethereum and I thought that's rather interesting. So. From the financial perspective, it well, we have seen it uh, uh, expand in a very dramatic way the last couple of years. But uh, from the application of the blockchain technology, uh, we haven't seen uh, that uh, much uh, uh, expansion. So I think that uh, the level that uh, the blockchain the technology is used and the uh, financial uh, depiction that we have on the markets uh, don't uh, uh, follow, one doesn't follow the other. So uh, I think that in the following years we'll see the use of blockchains as a technology expand compared to, to what we have seen so far. And so when I started uh, to study mathematics in 18 years old, I like that the mathematics uh, were very well defined. You had a problem, you had the solutions, all very, very clear. But uh, the bad thing it was that uh, I hadn't seen any application of mathematics during my undergrad degree. And when I started my MS in computer science, I we had uh, some uh, my, some um, cryptography lessons and uh, so on. And I started to see that mathematics were very related with cryptography and more applied things. And uh, I read, of course, for blockchain technology, and uh, I was very curious how we can uh, combine mathematics uh, in a more applied way in order to use it as a tool, not as a purpose, as a tool in order to prove something that it is a problem in the research area uh, that can give a practical solution and so on. The real world applications, the two things I think which are the most important flaws in the systems we have right now which I think need to be addressed is the first one is scalability and then systems we have right now deal with pitifully small amounts of data really uh, as in I think the Ethereum blockchain right now is a few hundred gigabyte out of the world working on it for years which is it's terrifying to download it, but it's also terrifyingly small when you consider this is all that has gone on worldwide. And we need to figure out a way to be able to handle more data. Um, and the second one is privacy and that the fact that blockchains, with a few exceptions, are essentially purely public is a very limiting factor for many applications and it's something that must be removed. It's what my research right now is mainly focused on. Uh, the benefits of being in the blockchain lab uh, are that pe people from different backgrounds can exchange uh, knowledge and ideas and they can have different opinions so it helps them to see certain problem from different angles. Well, the University of Edinburgh is one of the oldest institutions in uh, Great Britain and in Europe. And uh, it is interesting to see uh, such an institution uh, follow and uh, um, comply with the new advances in technology. So in that way, it is uh, very uh, it is interesting to be part of uh, a, a community that is also that brings uh, the history with it 
and also uh, uses it in order to promote the new advance in technology. It's a very nice environment in that we have essentially the freedom to do research into whatever we want. I mean, there are caveats, of course, but for the most part, as long as our research direction is interesting and doesn't seem doomed to failure, we are fine to do what we want, and it's nice to interact and be in the same room with people who are very talented and working on not the same thing, but very closely related things, so that they can see the problems you're having and that you can also appreciate the problems they're having and uh, see, in some sense, a larger picture of things crystallizing out of it all. Our research is uh, targets uh, problems that actually have impact in uh, the community and in some cases might uh, also have some uh, uh, industrial applications. So uh, in that way, our research uh, follows the academic criteria in terms of uh, how rigorously we do our work, but also we target problems that actually uh, have some real uh, implications in the community. In general, one of the things that drew me to doing a PhD and also draws me to blockchain is that it's um, essentially a system for the public good. And that I think that working on it, to put it in very high and mighty terms, is for the good of all. Um, where I do that, I don't really care. Uh, I think as a model, it's better suited for academia than for a business in principle. But if a business is working for the public good, then I, I don't really mind. So.